appreciate the WMU getting flowers for Mother's Day. That's such a good day to be here at the Lord's house. I'm so thankful that you chose to be here today in Stony Hill. So good to see everyone. Hope you do have a wonderful Mother's Day to you all. Yeah. We're so blessed, I tell you. Blessed. Blessed to be here. Uh, happy to be here. Hope, you, hope you're happy to be here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Are you glad to be here this morning? Amen. Amen. Good to see you all. I'm titled, The Message, A Call to Rejoice. A Call to Rejoice. I hope by the end of this message you have something to rejoice for. Maybe you are rejoicing. If not, maybe this will bring to your mind some things to rejoice for. And as I was walking in the woods, I told some of you all, I went walking. I've got to get back to shape. I tell you. Gotta get back in shape. My dad told me, he said, you know, it's easy to put on the pounds, but it's hard to take it off. Man, was he right? Was he right? And so I was good this week. I tell you what, every single day I made sure I did some type of extra. Well, not every single day. I did take a day or two off there. You know, brotherhood's about to do some mulch. I can't go out there looking and feeling, you know, like I can't keep up with you guys. I gotta get back in shape here. And so Wednesday, I hope I'll be able to sling some mulch out there with you guys. I'm planning on being here for Brotherhood. But I have been. I have been trying to be consistent. And I haven't got there about watching what I eat yet. Man, I tell you, I love the breads and, and everything else. I, man, I just, I don't know. I just, I haven't got there yet. But I am starting to exercise. You should see me doing some ab crunches there on, on the ground and lifting up some dumbbells. I tell you, I put it in my routine this week. I'm trying to stick with it. I'm going to try to stick with it. See, y'all don't hold me accountable, all right? So, hey, Pastor Phil, how's, how's that diet going there? Are you, are, are you eliminating any of that bread? Are you still doing the crunches there in your living room, Pastor Phil? Y'all hold me accountable, all right? I'm going to try to stick with this thing. See, Cynthia, you're going to Zoom classes and stuff you know, throughout the week and doing all that stuff. I've got to get back into it. I was telling somebody there at work, I've got to get back in shape. As I was walking through the woods, this thought came to my mind. About what does it mean to follow God? What does it mean to follow God? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What does it mean to follow God? So I was thinking about this question the other day as I was walking in the woods. What does it mean to follow God? We've been going through the book of Exodus. What did it mean to them there as they were leaving Egypt to follow God. What did that mean to them? Because we see that's what they're doing. They're being led out of Egypt and out of the desert. And the Bible says there in Exodus chapter 13 that they were God led. God led the people. They were led in the daytime and the nighttime. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 says, By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or by night. Now I recognize today is Mother's Day. And you know what? I couldn't think of a better suiting question to ask than this one. What does it mean to follow God? Church, is the Lord your guide? Is the Lord your pillar of cloud to guide you on your way? Is the Lord your guide? Is he your guide for your day? Well, Pastor, what does that look like? What does that look like? You know, there are some things I had to implement in my life. Because I found out that my way wasn't working. My way wasn't working. Nothing ever seemed to pan out. I've resorted to doing other things like drugs and alcohol to deal with my problems. And things only got worse. My way wasn't working. And so I had to learn that I had to, I had to learn to uh, relinquish the controls. There's some things that I had to change. And part of that was saying, you know what? Since I'm making a mess out of my life, I need someone else who's better capable 
to help me manage my life. A guide. That's what I needed. I needed a guide. And here we see in the text that that's what the Israelites had. The Lord was their guide. Church, is he your guide? Is he your guide for your day? Do you start off in the morning saying, Lord, what would you have me to do with my day today? How would you like for me to carry out the day? Will you give me the strength and the power to meet those challenges head on? Is that your prayer at the beginning of the day? Lord, you be my guide. Is the Lord your pillar of fire giving you light as you navigate through life? Is he your light? Is the Lord your light? Is he the light of your life? What does it mean to follow God? The Lord goes ahead of us as our guide and our light. You know, there's comfort in knowing that thought. There's comfort in knowing that God leads the way that he goes before us. Mothers, he goes before us. He goes before we pack the lunches and send the kids off to school. He goes before us. The Lord has been the one preparing the way before bedtime. And tucking the kids into bed, the Lord has been there giving rest to tired eyes. Before the birthdays and the joyous celebrations, the Lord goes before us creating happy times and joyful memories. Before the good times and before the bad times, the Lord goes before us leading the way. And knowing the Lord goes before us, not only should bring us comfort, but should bring us assurance. It should bring us assurance because he lives. Oh, this was the hymn. This was the hymn that we sang at my grandfather's life celebration service. Celebration of life service. This is what we sang because he lives. This is what my grandfather requested be sung there. And wow, I know some of you were there. Wow, what it sounded like there. All the people together singing together because he lives. How wonderful it was to hear it sung that day. Because he lives, church. Because he lives, I can face Tomorrow, That assurance, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You and I can face tomorrow because the Lord goes before us. You can have assurance. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Why do I need not fear? Listen, church. Because he lives. Because I know he holds the future. The living one holds the future. He holds your and my future. The Lord leads us. He goes before us as our guide and our light. And this should bring us comfort and assurance. Mothers, church, it's important for us to know that we have a guide. We have a light ready to lead us ready to lead our families and our children, that God can. Get this church, God can. I want you to know what God can do. He can lead us out of bondage. He can lead us away from the enemy. Just like we see that he did there for the Israelites. Church, what does it mean to follow God? It consists of what God has done. History. I've heard it said before, his story. What God has done. We see it, we read about it. What has God done? History, his story. And what can God do? Oh, if he's done it in the past, oh, he can do it today. What has God done and what can he do? I'll tell you one thing. He can do for you what he's done for me. 
He can lead you out of bondage and give you freedom. Israelites. He can lead, he can lead you out of bondage and give you freedom. He can make a way and escape from the enemy. He can make a way when we see no way. Think about them there. As they're trapped, they feel trapped. As the enemy was coming their direction and the, the sea was behind them. They didn't know what they were going to do, but God made a way. Oh, I love that sentence. But God, but God, oh, he can make a way when we see no way. Do you know what God is capable of? Do you trust in his power? This is one thing that I have to really think about and really put my faith in. You know, you have to put your faith in something. You have to put your faith in something. You know, I knew all about it. I could even quote some scriptures and I studied it. But it's one thing to know about it. But it's another thing to actually put your trust in it. Do you trust in his power? That his power can perform mighty things in your life. That his power can give you the strength that you need for the day. Do you trust and believe in his power? The power to deliver you out of whatever you're going through. What challenges are you facing? You know, Moses who had experience following God. He spoke words of faith to people. Maybe you need words of faith. To encourage you today. Maybe you need words of faith spoken into your life. Moses spoke words of faith to the people's fears. Do you have some fears in your life? Do you need some words of faith spoken to you? I think God would have me tell you this. Trust. Trust in the power of God. And there's moments and times where you feel fearful. Trust in, those, in the power of God in those moments and times when you feel fearful. Trust in the power of God when you feel uneasy. Trust in the power of God when you feel hopeless. Trust in the power of God when you feel trapped. For God knows the way. He is the way. He goes before you as your guide and light. What does it mean to follow God? Trust. Faith. The Lord has led us this far and the Lord will see us through. Do you have questions about an area or a particular matter in your life? Maybe you're asking, how am I going to get through this? How? Well, I can just imagine the Israelites there. They see the enemy approaching them. They got the Red Sea behind them. How? How are we going to get through this? How am I going to get through this? All oh, the Israelites must have thought the same thing. How are we going to get through this? What are we going to do now? You know, in those times of crisis and trouble, it can be easy to allow our emotions to swell and for them to take over. Church, we need to be reminded that God is sovereign. We need to be reminded that God is in control. And that he need, and He has not left us alone. Oh, that's one thing I had to do there. I had to look at my own life and saw that it felt like I had to control everything. I had to be in the mix of everything. It's one thing to turn over those reins there and say, God, you lead the way. You lead the way. Lord, I'm going to hand over my kids to you. Lord, I'm going to hand over my grandkids to you. Lord, I am going to hand over my life and my control to you. God, you are sovereign. We need to be reminded that God is in control and he has not left us alone. What does it mean to be followers of God? What does it mean to follow God? Be encouraged. We take courage and are encouraged to watch God work. Oh, I, had a, I had a minister there, a pastor, a friend of mine. He used to always say, go out and go look for what God is doing. Go out in the community. See where God is. Mr. Rogers said something similar as, as the 9-11, the towers came crashing down. Someone asked him about God. 
You know, yes, you can look at all the tragedy, but look for the helpers. Look where the people are that's going out to help to do something. It's to do something. They're going out into the community. That's where I believe God is. Go look for the need. Oh, that's what ministry is. To go and look for the need and meet those needs. Meet those needs. Oh, be encouraged. What does it mean to follow God? It means to be encouraged, to take courage and encourage to watch God work. Knowing God is for us and working out deliverance and salvation. Oh, why do we always think that we're in the business of saving people? Well, you know what? This person just needs me in their life to, to help them do that because they can't do it themselves. I just need to get involved. I just need to save this person from themselves. Oh, dear church, we have a Savior. We have a Savior, and His name is Jesus Christ. It's His business. To be in the deliverance business and the salvation business. That is his work. That's what he's been doing. That's what he continues to do. Oh, so you might be in a situation where you say, how will I make it? How will I get through this? You know, I might not have all the details for you. But I believe that God is making a way. How do I know that? He died for me while we were yet sinners. He made a way. He made a way. And so you might be thinking, how will I make it? How will I get out of this? How will I get through this? I might not have all the details, but I believe that God is making a way. What does it mean to follow God? We take courage from what God has done. That God provides a way. That he brings about deliverance for his people. God parted the Red Sea and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground. With a wall of water on their right and on their left. You talk about making an impression. Talk about making an impression. You know, God can do some amazing and impressive things. Are you looking for it? Are you praying for it? Oh, it blows me away. It's so amazing what he does. And I've brought it up before in the past, but I love bringing it up. As I was going from Charlotte up here, I'd see this old dilapidated racetrack. Hadn't been used in years. Somebody told me I hadn't been a racer since 1996. And I didn't know at that time. I, I didn't really know why I was praying for the time. I just knew it was an eyesore. But I prayed. Every time I passed the place, I'd pray. And I'd come up there on what used to be called Lake Taco. And I'd pray for that too. God can do some amazing, impressive things. Can't he, church? Yeah. Are you looking for it? Are you praying the big prayers? Are you praying for it? Are you praying for our church here? That God can do some amazing and impressive things. Things. He can do some amazing and impressive things in your life. Do you have faith? Do you have trust? What does it mean to follow God? We take courage from what God has done. God provides a way. He brings about deliverance for his people. God can do some amazing and impressive things. And church, this is a call to rejoice. Oh, rejoice. Rejoice! Think about the praises that we hear. Oh, so good. So good. Say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. There's a call to rejoice. Rejoice in the God who makes a way. Oh, has he made a way for you in your life? Rejoice in the God who makes a way. Rejoice in the God who works miracles. Oh, you're looking at one here. Miracle. A miracle. Always oh, think about a miracle in me. God works miracles. Rejoice in the God who works miracles, who brings about deliverance for his people. Rejoice in God who is victorious and brings victories to his people. Oh, well, you don't have to live a defeated life. God gives the power and the strength. Oh, our God is victorious. God is victorious. He brings victory to his people. And you might say, well, uh, I don't feel like I'm walking in the victory now. 
He's working in your favor. He's working in your favor. Do you know that he's, he's made the way that he's given you his all? Oh, I love that verse in Romans that he has given us his everything. He's given us his son. Will he not give us everything? Oh, beloved. Oh, beloved. And, and what Paul says here, what does it mean to follow God? He says, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Not sometimes, but always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And if we didn't hear it the first time, he says it again. I will say it again. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Oh, it's sometimes hard to find that joy. You know, I felt like that a week or two ago. I felt like it was hard. And it was like we looked at there in the Sunday school room, the class today. And maybe there's some things that you need to get back to, that you've gotten out of. Maybe you need to go back to those things. What brings you peace? What brings you joy? God will give you his peace. He will give you his joy. What does it mean to follow the Lord? We rejoice. We are given the gifts and the promises. We are given deliverance and salvation. And we are given a song to sing. Oh, I'm so thankful that one of my pastor friends who preached a revival for us a little while way back posted a song on me. We are given a song to sing. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King. Exalt him. 
parents, fathers, mothers, look at this. Look at this. Look at what it says in Exodus 15, verse 2. My father's God, I will exalt him. Do you? Does your kids know who your God is? Does your kids know who your God is? You know, it calls for a personal relationship. Look at how many times it says there in verse 2 about the word my. Look how many times the word my is mentioned in verse 2. Five times. The Lord is my strength. My defense, my song, he has become my salvation, my God, my Father's God. You know, to follow God is personal, but it's also important to be evident in the parent's life. To be evident in the parent's life. Oh, parents, take time to talk about the importance of a personal relationship with God. Take the time to talk about the importance of a personal relationship with God. And take the time to praise Him and what He has done for you. Showing humility and gratitude. And to follow God is also knowing that God brings about justice. I don't know how often we want to do that for ourselves. I'm going to get back at so-and-so. They deserve it. You see the way they treated me? I'm going to get back at them. To follow God. Is knowing that God brings about justice. That there's a divine order in the universe. And by being guided and given light, we can know what our part in it is. I was thinking too there in Sunday school, the prayer that Jesus teaches his disciples. Lord, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We have a part to play in this thing. We have a part to know what justice is and to go about bringing justice. But as God has deemed it, what is our part? What is our part? What does it mean to follow God? Know that God brings about justice. We also need the wisdom to know when do we fight? When do we act? How shall we proceed? When should we let go and let God? Exodus 15 verse 3 says the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Oh, you think God's too weak to hear your prayer? You think God's too weak to act on your behalf? The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Give God the credit. Give him the glory. What battles has God fought in your life? What has what battles has God fought on your behalf? Where has the victory been won? There's some things we might not even know until we get up to, to heaven. Why you were late for that meeting? Why you're delayed at that stoplight? Exodus 15. We'll close with this. Exodus 15. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the water piled up. The surging water stood firm like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue, I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you, all of that, but God, but you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? If we look back there at verse 9, we see how the arrogance of the enemy believes in his own power, his own power in the pursuit 
He believes he will overtake God's people. What has the enemy claimed over your life? Did the enemy claim victory and power over you? Have you over you and your children? Did the enemy say that you were too far gone? Too stained with sin? Too broken to be used? Was the enemy ready to destroy? But God. But with one breath of God, God breathed out. The breath of God blew and won the victory. The voice of the Lord in the book of Revelation it said to, the, to, to be sounding like the rushing waters. And here we read, you blew your breath and the sea covered them. This is how the Lord gets the victory with his breath, with his word, he is victorious. Who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic and holiness, awesome and glory, working wonders? Who is like our Lord? Verse 12, you stretch out your right hand and the earth swallows your enemies. What does it mean to follow God? To be ushered into victory. What does it mean to follow God? To be led by God's unfailing love. Oh, I love this church. Let me share this with you in verse 13. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. What does it mean to follow God? To be guided by his strength and power to the promise he has prepared led to his holy dwelling, the sanctuary the Lord has established. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall upon them. By the power of your arm, they will be as steel as stone until your people pass by. O oh Lord, until the people you bought pass by. You'll bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance. The place, O oh Lord, you made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, O oh Lord, your hands established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women followed her with tambourines and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. Miriam, the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. Notice that she echoes the first verse, but she does so in her own way, in her own expression, calling others to rejoice and sing and praise. Oh, church, this is a call to rejoice. It's a call to invite others into worshipful praise. Remember I told you last week, I put some cards out. Take some. Take some. You might just be what the person needs that day, that interaction, that contact, that moment of blessing. You know what? No one's ever invited me to church before. You know, there's people out in our community that's never been invited to church. You could be that person's blessing. You could put something in their hand saying, will you join me for church? I'll meet you there. We could even go have coffee or lunch afterwards. Put it in their hand. Invite them to church. It's a call to rejoice. It's an invitation to worshipful praise. Notice that Miriam took the initiative. Church, we have to put feet on our prayer. Take the initiative. Take the initiative. Invite others to rejoice and praise with you. Notice that Miriam took the initiative. She was compelled to praise and worship, and all the women followed her. Are we providing a worshipful experience? A worshipful example to follow? On this Mother's Day, let us reflect on what it means to follow God. And lead others to participate in joyful worship. For it's a call to rejoice. Amen.
Amen. There's cards out there. Please take some. Invite some. Invite some people with you. Say, come. Come. Worship. We have God worthy of praise. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Father, let us continue to have an attitude of gratitude to reflect on what you've done in our life and what you continue to do. Oh, Lord, you're worthy of our praise. Lord, you're worthy of our songs. Lord, help us to praise you, to worship you, to begin our days with you, to continue to seek areas in where you're working, to be a part of that. For Lord, we know that the call to follow you is a call to rejoice. For Lord, you give us peace, you give us joy, and Lord, we are truly thankful. Thank you for our mothers. Thank you for the godly influence, the impact that they have had on our life. Lord, help us not to neglect these things. Help us not to take it for granted, but to be grateful and to show others that you are amazing and worthy of our praise. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.